Hello guys, my name is Nikander, I'm a professional blockchain developer and in this guide I'm going to show you how to create your own Notcoin Telegram mini app. This way we will be able to open it directly in Telegram as a mini app, play the clicker game and earn some points. Let's get started. I've prepared a GitHub repository called Notcoin Clone. There are two branches in this repository, initial setup and final version. The initial setup branch contains an empty vid project with some images that we need to create the project. The final version branch is the completed project. I'm going to use the initial setup branch now to show you the whole process of creating this app. Clone the repository. Navigate to the project directory, switch to the initial setup branch, install dependencies. Now we have an empty vid project with some useful images. Let's run the web app and see how it looks right now. Type npm run dev. Copy the link and open it in your browser. Now we have a standard vid project without some CSS classes. Inspect the code and toggle the device toolbar, so it looks like it would on a smartphone device. This way we can understand how it will appear as a Telegram mini app. Locate browser and VS code side by side, so we would see all the changes we made immediately. Clear all the existing code inside the app.tsx and inside the app.css. Use the use state hook to create two state variables, points and energy, both are initialized to random values. These variables will hold the current points and energy levels and their respective set points and set energy functions will be used to update these values. Create a div element with several Tailwind CSS classes. BG gradient main class applies a background gradient. Min H screen ensures the element's minimum height is the full height of the screen. PX4 adds horizontal padding. Flex, flex call items center arranges its children in a vertical column and centers them. Text white sets the text color to white and font medium applies a medium font weight. Create a div element absolute inset 0, position the element absolutely to cover the entire parent element, h1 slash 2 class sets the height to half of the parent element's height, bg gradient overlay applies a gradient background, z0 sets the z index to 0, placing it behind other elements with higher z index values. Create a div element, absolute inset 0, position the element absolutely to cover the entire parent element, flex items center justify center classes center its child elements both vertically and horizontally using flexbox. z0 class sets the index to 0, placing it behind other elements with higher z index values. Inside this div we add another div with the class radial gradient overlay, which applies a radial gradient overlay. Let's declare background CSS classes, open index.css, define custom CSS styles for the body and gradient backgrounds, the body selector sets the font family to sans serif, bg gradient main class applies a linear gradient background that 
transitions from bright orange to light orange. BG gradient overlay applies a linear gradient background that transitions from black at the top to transparent at the bottom. Radial gradient overlay sets the position to absolute and shows the element covers the full width and height and applies a radial gradient background that transitions from light yellow with 80% opacity at the center to fully transparent at the edges. Go back to app.tsx, create a diff element, W full class sets the width to 100% of the parent element, Z10 sets the index to 10, ensuring it is layered above elements with lower Z index values. Min H screen sets the minimum height to the full height of the screen. Flex, flex call, items center, arrange its children in a vertical column and center them horizontally using flexbox. Text white sets the text color to white. Create a div element. Fixed class positions the element fixed relative to the viewport, ensuring it stays in place even when scrolling. Top 0, left 0 classes position the element at the top left corner of the viewport. W full class sets width to 100% of the parent element, px4 adds horizontal padding of 1 rem on both sides, pt8 adds top padding of 2 rem, z10 sets z index to 10, ensuring it is layered above elements with lower z index, flex flex call items center, arrange its children in vertical column and center them horizontally using flexbox. Text white sets the text color to white. Define a div element with the class W full to set its width to 100% of the parent element. Cursor pointer class changes the cursor to a pointer when hovering over the element, indicating it's clickable. Inside this div, create another div with a background color of dark gray, centered text, vertical padding of 0.5 rem, and rounded corners. Inside this inner div, we add a P element with the class text LG to set the text size to large and the text join squad. Let's create arrow icon, create a folder, icons, inside this folder create arrow.tsx file, create additional folder, utils, inside this folder create file types.ts, define a TypeScript type icon props that describes the properties for an icon component, this type includes two optional properties, size, which is a number representing the size of the icon, and class name, which is a string representing any additional CSS classes to be applied to the icon. Go back to arrow.tsx, define a functional component arrow that takes icon props as its props, the size prop has a default value of 24 and the class name prop has a default value of an empty string. Inside the component, we set the SVG size variable to the string size px to define the size of the SVG element. We return an SVG element with specified class name height and width based on the SVG size variable. The SVG has a viewbox attribute 
and it contains the path data that defines the arrow shape. Now we can use this icon in our app component. Use arrow component near the join squad text. The arrow component is given a size of 18 and additional classes ML0, MB1, inline block, which set the left margin to 0, bottom margin to 0 0.25 frame and display the element as an inline block. Define a div element with several Tailwind CSS classes. MT12 adds a top margin of 3 rem. Text 5XL sets the text size to 5XL. Font bold makes the font bold. And flex items center arranges its children in a horizontal row and centers them vertically using Flexbox. Inside this div, we add an image element with a source of coin, a width of 44 pixels and a height of 44 pixels. Next to the image, we include a span element with a left margin of 0.5 frame that displays the points variable formatted as a localized string. Define a div element. Text base sets the text size to base. MT2 adds a top margin of 0.5 frame. And flex items center arranges its children in a horizontal row and centers them vertically. Inside this div, we add an image element with a source of trophy, a width of 24 pixels and a height of 24 pixels. Next to the image, we include a span element with a left margin of 0.25 frame that displays the text gold followed by the arrow component. The arrow component is given a size of 18 and additional classes ML0, MB1, inline block, which set the left margin to 0, bottom margin to 0 0.25 frame and display the element as an inline block. Create a bottom section, fixed, positions the element relative to the viewport, ensuring it stays in place even when scrolling. Bottom zero, left zero classes position the element at the bottom left corner of the viewport. W full sets the width to 100% of the parent element. PX4 adds horizontal padding of one rem on both sides. PB4 adds bottom padding of one rem. Z10 sets the Z index to 10 ensuring it is layered above elements with lower Z index values. Define a div element that serves as a container with several Tailwind CSS classes. WFull sets the width to 100% of the parent element. Flex enables Flexbox layout. Justify between spaces the child elements evenly with the first item at the start and the last item at the end. And gap2 adds a gap of 0.5 rem between the child elements. Define a div element. W1 slash 3 sets the width to one third of the parent element. Flex enables flexbox layout. Items center vertically centers the child elements. Justify start aligns the child elements to the start. And max W32 sets the maximum width to 8 rem. Inside this div, we have another div with flex items center justify center that center its child elements 
both horizontally and vertically using Flexbox. Within this inner div, we include an EMG element with a source of high voltage, a width of 44 pixels, a height of 44 pixels and an alt text of high voltage. Next to this image, there is another div with ML2 text left that add a left margin of 0.5 rem and align the text to the left. Inside this div, we have two span elements, the first with text white, text to Excel, font bold, block, that set the text color to white, text size to 2 Excel, font weight to bold and display to block, showing the energy variable. The second span element has text white, text large, opacity 75 classes that set the text color to white, text size to large and opacity to 75%, displaying 6500. Create a div. Flex Grow allows the element to grow and take up available space within its container. Flex enables Flexbox layout. Items center vertically centers the child elements. Max W60 sets the maximum width to 15 rem and text SM sets the text size to small. Inside this div define a div element. W full sets the width to 100% of the parent element. BG FAD258 sets the background color to a specific shade of yellow. PY4 adds vertical padding of 1 rem. Rounded to Excel gives the element extra large rounded corners. Flex enables Flexbox layout and justify a round evenly distributes the child elements with space around them. Define a button element. Flex enables Flexbox layout. Flex call arranges its children in a vertical column. Items center centers the child elements horizontally and gap 1 adds a gap of 0.25 rem between the child elements. Inside this button, we include an image of a bear. Below the image, there is a span element that contains the text friends. Create the same buttons for earn with an image of a coin and for boost with an image of a rocket. Add separator div elements. H48PX sets the height to 48 pixels. W2PX sets the width to 2 pixels. And BGFDDB6D sets the background color to a specific shade of yellow. Create a div element. WFull sets the width to 100% of the parent element, BGF9C035 sets the background color to a specific shade of yellow, rounded full gives the element fully rounded corners, and MT4 adds a top margin of 1 rem. This div serves as a container for a progress bar. Inside this container, we add another div element with BG gradient to R to create a gradient background that transitions from a specific shade of yellow to a light yellow. H4 to set the height to 1 rem and rounded full to give it fully rounded corners. The style attribute dynamically sets the width of this inner div based on the current energy level, calculating it as a percentage of the maximum energy, 6500, 
this inner div represents the field portion of the progress bar. Define a state variable clicks using the use state hook, initializing it as an empty array. Each element in this array is an object with id, x and y properties, where id is a number representing a unique identifier and x and y are numbers representing the coordinates of a click. Define two constants, points to add and energy to reduce, both set to 12. Points to add specifies the number of points to add per click, energy to reduce specifies the amount of energy to reduce per click. Define a handle click function that handles click events on a diff element. This function does the following. Checks if the current energy level is sufficient to perform the action. Energy minus energy to reduce more or equal to zero. If not, the function returns early without making any changes. Get the bounding rectangle of the clicked element using e dot current target dot get bounding client rect. Calculate the x and y coordinates of the click relative to the element. Update the points state by adding points to add. Update the energy state by reducing it by energy to reduce, ensuring it doesn't drop below zero. Update the clicks state by adding a new click object, which includes a unique ID and the calculated x and y coordinates. Define a handle animation end function that handles the end of animation for a click. This function takes an ID as a parameter and does the following. Update the clicks state by filtering out the click object with the specified ID. This effectively removes the click from the clicks array once its animation has ended. Use the use effect hook to restore energy over time. Inside the use effect hook, we set up an interval using set interval that runs every 100 milliseconds. In each interval, we call set energy to increment the current energy by one, ensuring it does not exceed 6500 using mass.min. The return statement clears the interval when the component unmounts to prevent memory leaks. Create a diff element. Flex grow allows the diff to grow and take up any available space within its parent container. Flex enables flex box layout for the diff. Items center vertically centers the child elements within the diff. Justify center horizontally centers the child elements within the div. This div serves as a flexible container that centers its content both horizontally and vertically. Let's create a CSS animation that will apply to the earned points every time user clicks. Open index.css, define a CSS keyframes animation named float at 0% the start of the animation the element has full opacity opacity 1 and no vertical translation transform translate y 0 at 100% the end of the animation the element is fully transparent opacity 0 and has moved up by 50 pixels. Transform translate y minus 50 px. Go back to app.tsx. Define a div element with several Tailwind CSS classes and on click event handler. Relative positions the div relative to its normal position, allowing its children to be positioned 
absolutely within it. MT4 adds a top margin of 1 rem. On click equals handle click attaches the handle click function to handle click events. Inside this div we include an EMG element with a source of not coin, a width of 256 pixels, a height of 256 pixels and an alt text of not coin. We then map over the clicks array to dynamically render a div for each click. Each click div has a unique key based on the click.id. The div is styled with several Tailwind CSS classes. Absolute for absolute positioning, text 5xl for large text size, font bold for bold text and opacity 0 for initial invisibility. The inline style attribute sets the top and left positions based on the click coordinates and applies the float animation for one second with an is out timing function. The on animation end event handler calls handle animation end to remove the click after the animation ends. The div displays the number 12 to represent the points earned. Our app is ready. As you can see, we can click and earn some points. In the same time, our energy is reducing when we clicking. When we are not clicking, our energy is restoring. We can add the final touch and rename the title to NotCoin Clone. Our app looks beautiful on different vertically oriented screens. That's exactly what we needed for a beautiful Telegram mini app. Now we can upload this project to our GitHub repository and then deploy it to the internet for free using the Vercel.com service. Just click Add New Project, select a desired GitHub repository, click Import, and your project will be deployed on the internet within a second. Then we can see the URL in our dashboard. This is how our app looks on the internet. We didn't optimize it for horizontally oriented screens, but it's not too hard to do. Anyway, we don't need it right now. Let's create a Telegram mini app based on this clicker. Copy the URL and open the bot father Telegram bot. Click New bot. Type a name, for example, NotCoin clone. Choose a username for the bot. Click New app and select the created bot. Enter a title for the web app. Enter a short description. Upload an image. We can skip the GIF uploading. Finally, paste the link we copied before. Type a short name for the web app. Our Telegram mini app is ready and we can open it now. It looks great, allowing us to click and earn points. The design is beautiful and matches the original NotCoin app perfectly. In the upcoming videos, I'll show you how to render clicks on the server side and validate them. We'll also connect to a database to save all the data about user clicks. This way, we'll be able to airdrop our deployed TON tokens to the users who have earned them. That's it for today, folks. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.